In this chemistry lab experiment, we explore the synthesis of urea, a compound commonly used in fertilizers, plastic, and pharmaceutical. Watch as a second year student at Kidia Robert University main campus demonstrate the reaction between ammonia and carbon dioxide to produce urea. In this video, we are simply going to include a step by step explanation of the balanced chemical reaction the determination of excess reagent and the calculation of the mass of the urea which is formed at the end of the day. Follow along the understanding of the stereochemistry of the reaction and learn about the key principle of chemical synthesis. Let's assume are given this kind of problem which says a second year student at Gideon Robert University, which is main campus, was trying to prepare a urea. She react the ammonia with carbon dioxide, which she was offered. In this case, we are giving the ammonia to be 637.2 grams and 1,142 grams of carbon dioxide. The first thing she was asked to do is to write the balanced chemical equation for the above reaction. What are the two reactions which we have here? This is simply the reaction between ammonia and carbon dioxide. The second thing we are asked to find is which of the two reactants is excess reagent. And the last thing but not least, we are asked to calculate the mass of urea which is formed at the end of the day. How can we solve this problem? To write the balanced chemical reaction for this reaction, which is simply between ammonia, and carbon dioxide. To form the urea, we first need to identify the numbers of the element on both sides. In this case, if you react ammonia, you will react it together with carbon dioxide. This is the final product, which is urea. Notice that when we say urea, this is simply a molecule composed of two molecules of ammonia and one molecule of carbon dioxide. In the combination of carbon dioxide, we have carbon and oxygen, but because the oxygen is two, we call it di. In this case, that is why we refer to carbon dioxide. So, and this is the chemical reaction. But you can choose to put it differently by writing for you to react this, this is simply going to be 2NH3, let's collide this with carbon dioxide, the final product is simply going to be NH2 to CO. In this case, this is carbon dioxide, this is ammonia, and this is urea. So, we are done with the first problem. The second problem says which of the two reactants is excess reagent. How can we solve this problem? To determine which of the two reactants is excess reagent, first thing we need to do is to compare the stoic, uh, sorry, stoichiometric coefficient of the balance equation with the actual amount of the reactant. In this case, we are given the mass of ammonia to be 637.2 grams. And we are given the mass of carbon dioxide. Mass of carbon dioxide is given to be 1,142 grams because it is indicated already in the question. First thing you need to do is to calculate the numbers of moles of each reactant using the respective molar mass. How can we solve this problem? The atomic mass of nitrogen on the periodic table is simply going to be 14. And when, we check, when you check for the hydrogen, this is simply going to be 1. But remember, ammonia is a combination of 1 nitrogen and 3 hydrogen. 
14 plus 3 multiplied by 1. This is simply going to be 17. What I'm trying to explain here is this. The atomic mass of nitrogen on the periodic table is 14. Atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. And in this problem, we are given NH3. This is the same thing as saying 14 plus 1 multiplied by 3. This is simply going to be 17. So, but remember, this is our molar mass. So we can say the molar mass of ammonia is 17, but remember there are some point behind 0 0.03 grams per mole. For carbon dioxide, we have combination of two oxygen and one carbon. In this case, the carbon, the atomic mass of carbon is 12, and for the oxygen, is 16. But carbon dioxide is 2 oxygen. 16 multiplied by 2, this is simply going to be 32. 32 plus 12, and this is simply going to be 44. Together with every a point which we have behind, is going to be 0 0.01 grams per mole. We can go ahead and say the molar mass of carbon dioxide is simply going to be 44.01 also gram per moles. At this point, we have already defined the molar mass, remaining the moles. This is the molar. This is the mo, this, this is the mass of ammonia. This is the molar mass of ammonia. This is the mass of carbon dioxide. And this is the molar mass of carbon dioxide. The remaining the moles now. When we set moles of ammonia, this is simply going to be the mass divided by its molar mass. In this case, this is our mass, which is 637.2 divided by the molar mass of ammonia, which is 17.0 gram per mole. Remember, the mass is also measured in gram. At this point, grams will cancel out. We are going to divide 637.2 divided by 17.0. The only unit remaining behind is moles. If you divide these two, you are going to be ending up with 37.43 mole. Ammonia. The mole Sorry, the mole of carbon dioxide is simply going to be the mass divided by its molar mass. The mass of carbon dioxide we are given to be 1,142 grams divided by its molar mass, which is 44.0 grams per mole. Grams will cancel out. We are going to be left with these two denominator numerator. If you divide both sides, you are going to be left with 25.97 in moles. In this case, let's write it separately. You can see the moles of ammonia is simply going to be what? Ammonia is 37.43. And we have the moles of carbon dioxide, which is 25. 0.97 moles. So next thing we need to do at this point is to determine the stoichiometric ratio of each of the reactants based on the balance equation. If you notice, the ratio between the ammonia and carbon dioxide, this is simply going to be 1 ratio 1. If the ratio is 1 in the ratio 1, next thing we need to do is to compare the actual moles of, the, of each reactant to the 
uh, to this ratio. In this case, the actual mole of ammonia, right? This is simply going to be 37.43 in moles. What about the actual mole of carbon dioxide? The actual mole is 25.97 also moles. If that's the case, <clears throat> at this point, we can determine the excess reagent. Since the ratio of ammonia and carbon dioxide is 1 ratio 1, then <clears throat> we can conclude and say the reactant with the higher number of moles is the excess reagent. In this case, we are going to have the ammonia is going to be greater than the carbon dioxide, since 37 is greater than 25. In this case, we can conclude and say the ammonia is what this is the excess reagent. And this is it for this problem. The only thing we are left with at this point is the last one. The last one says we should calculate the mass of ammonia, sorry, urea which is formed. For us to calculate the mass of ammonia, well, sorry, urea which is formed based on the, based on the balance equation, you should know that the carbon dioxide to urea is also going to be 1 ratio 1. That's carbon dioxide to urea. Let's just write it this way. It's also what 1 ratio 1. First thing you need to do is to calculate the numbers of moles of the urea itself. When you talk on your purity table, nitrogen, the atomic mass for nitrogen is simply going to be 14. Hydrogen is 2. 2 multiplied by 2 is 2. 2 plus 14 is simply going to be 16. 16 multiplied by 2 is simply going to be 32. 32 plus carbon, which is 12, plus another oxygen. In this case, we can say the numbers of moles of carbon dioxide is simply going to be 25.97 moles. What about the numbers of moles of urea, which is NH2? to CO the numbers of more here is also going to be 25.97 moles next thing we need to do at this point is to calculate the mass of the urea formed using its molar mass in this case the molar mass of urea is a molar mass if you check your period table molar mass of urea which is NH2 what is the molar mass of urea? it's simply going to be 60.06 in grams per mole so at this point we can finally calculate the mass of the urea The mass of the urea, how can we solve that problem? The mass of urea is simply going to be, we are going to multiply the mass of carbon dioxide. We are going to multiply that by the molar mass of the urea itself. What is the mass of carbon dioxide? If you notice or if you jot it down, the mass of carbon dioxide is simply going to be 25.97 mole multiplied by molar mass of the urea itself, which we said is 60.06, which is in what? Gram per mole. If you multiply everything here, your final answer is simply going to be 1,558.06. Zero six grams. Therefore, we can finally conclude and say approximately 1,558.06 grams of urea can be formed from the given reactor. So this is it for this problem. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.